Morning, Ted. Good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm 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 kind of excited for uh, this conversation. Uh, um, I, I've been watching your tweets this morning, and uh, I jumped in there a little bit. Um, let's just jump right in here, buddy. So, so I woke up this morning, and uh, and my local news has got an article on this this new uh, All Together cereal from Kellogg's, and it's a cereal that Kellogg's has put together to to help support L- LGBTQ uh, rights and and awareness, and and also to have spark conversations about bullying and whatever, and and uh, you, you know all of the the political ramifications aside, uh, forget. The, you, you know, what is the purpose of a brand, right? Purpose of a brand is to create an idea and, and awareness and relevancy in a shopper's mind. And when is the last time you heard a CPG brand being talked about on the local news, right? And then as, as fate would have it. Especially supporting what? something incredibly positive. Well, and, 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 you know, I, I get that and I, I see that, but, but my, the bigger conversation, cause this, this went on a little bit. So I'm, I'm taking my, my daughter, I'm taking my Catherine and her friend to Chick-fil-A this morning. Cause that's where they want to go. And, um, I, I see a, a post by Chris Brogan talking about this and I'm like, look, people are talking about this. And I commented on Chris's post and instantly I get somebody reaching out going, Oh, this is woke culture. And this is, uh, this is virtue signaling and all the, the talking points. I said, look, I'm not really interested in having a political conversation. We can, we can do that. This is, but as a marketer, this is what marketing is about. It is, it is getting involved in conversations that are relevant to your customer base and, and some people that it will appeal to and some people that will not, but that's the purpose of a brand, right? Uh, you know, absolutely. One of the things you and I talk about a lot and that I write about a lot is that in my opinion, uh, conversation is the best content and and or at least conversations are one of the best forms of content because it gets people talking and what are they talking about they're talking about you they're talking about your brand they're talking about your products and you know I think you know you mentioned this earlier to me it, that doesn't mean just jumping in on any conversation that's out sure. there that's the hot conversation of the day and try to include your brand on, on it the, the way Gillette and P&G did and, I, and you know a little bit more about that one so you can jump in with a little bit of the commentary on what happened there this is something that's kind of relevant to families, relevant to kids. They didn't just jump in on a conversation. They actually started a conversation of their own um, using their product, like in a very sure. relevant way. And, you know, it was very funny. You just said to me, hey, the all together product is like the, the snack packs we used to buy with all the little different boxes that you used to pour them together. So they're actually taking something that they <laughs> did it one time, creating a, a short-term window for a product, which also gets a little bit more attention, a little bit more sure. conversation. And they're getting people talking about a very valuable subject that's really important while they're supporting anti-bullying, inclusion, and other things that are really important conversations today. I don't think anybody can say anti-bullying is not something we should be talking about. You know, you're exactly right. And I, and I think if you think about what is their access point into this conversation, it is, I'm trying to have conversations with my daughter today about some of these subjects, right? right. And wh- wh- that totally makes sense. What you, you mentioned, the, the Gillette and p and I don't know if you, re- you remember, there, there was a, a campaign that, that Gillette had done, um, you, you know, really, really looking at, uh, at male dominated culture and they had done a, I think they were trying uh, to jump act- in, I think they were trying to jump into the me too conversation at the time. They were trying to jump in the me too conversation, but I, I think they did it as a me too conversation of, oh yeah, we're involved in things and probably didn't have any relevancy and talk about a brand that has built itself on kind of bro culture. I mean, the, the whole idea uh, of, of the best a man can get. And, and you think about how the brand has marketed itself, um, I think became a little irrelevant to a new generation of shoppers. And I don't know if you saw last week, but but uh, Procter & Gamble had to write down its investment in Gillette by $8 billion, which they blamed on people not shaving anymore because people have beards. And I would say, okay, mm, that's part of it, but uh, Harry's, Dollar Shave Club and other direct-to-consumer brands took a 12-point margin share out of that category. Think about that. If you went to a brand 
and you took 12 points of margin, you would be the most genius brand marketer that ever walked the planet. And I think the brand got relevant, got, I'm sorry, irrelevant. And it jumped into a conversation that it really didn't have a place to play. And it got hammered. Try, trying to make itself more relevant when in essence, what really hurt them was that they, they their, the simplicity that Harry's and, Day, and Dollar Shave Club brought to the table. It, it wasn't just price, although of course they based it originally around that, but a lot of it had to do with being delivered to your door, clicking a button, automatic delivery, things that Gillette should have done a long time ago and just never jumped into the space. And now even today, I think they're just kind of tiptoeing into it instead of jumping in in a big way. But again, like you said, they try to grab a topic <laughs> to make themselves relevant again. Whereas I don't see the Kellogg thing that way. I see it as a non-controversial top topic, whereas, whereas Gillette jumped into something very controversial because it was the talk of the day. Instead of looking a little bit more deeply in how can we really relate to this, they, they upset a big part of, the, uh, of their demographic and the people sure. they work with. Um, the same way other brands have done when they start making fun of dads or dads can't cook or dads can't clean or that we're all just, you know, um, animals. Idiots. You know, and, and idiots. Or idiots. Which, right. We might be, but it's not something we certainly want thrown in our face in that degree from a brand that, that is almost all about us. Whereas Kellogg is dealing with children and, and families and, and important topics. And I think you only think of it as political if you make everything about politics, I don't think inclusivity yes. and anti-bullying is about politics. I think it's about well, being the, a human being. The talking point, and you'll see, you're going to see this today because you, you you watch on Twitter today, uh, virtue signaling and woke culture. Those are going to be the conversations yeah. that go on on that side. And my point is, okay, great, but it probably doesn't have anything to do with their core customer anyway. So right. you know. As a brand, I think more brands are getting comfortable with the idea that, yeah, anything that I do today, somebody's going to get going to get amped up about. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on my customers. I'm going to focus on driving relevancy and conversation among my customers. And if you don't like it, well, I'm sorry. That's, that's going to be part of it, too, because, by the way, that's always existed with brands. And I have to tell you, who are Kellogg's customers for cereal? They're kids and they're the parents who buy the cereals for the kids. Sure. I mean, granted, there are some parents that eat them too, but basically they're, they're looking at families and what family today isn't, isn't having that conversation in one way or another. Even if you don't agree, maybe there should be more less inclusivity, but they're still talking about it. Sure. And again, sure. I agree with that point of view. Let's be very clear. But, um, and, and who's not talking about anti-bullying? I don't think there's any parent you would talk to who says, yes, I champion bullying. You know, sure, there might be some parents that say, well, kids got to toughen up a little bit, or I want my kid to be able to deal with it because it's the real world and it's going to be there. But not one of them is going to say, oh, bullying's okay. Sure. And it's not something that yeah, you have no, to I, 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 I think it's a good conversation. I think it's, I think it's relevant. And, you know, I, I, really, I, I really was impressed this morning when, you know, when I woke up and I'm, I'm watching and, and you, you see this conversation beginning to happen and then watching it move now to digital channels and other places uh which is interesting well what i did find was interesting in the product i actually went and did more research and kind of clicked through this product's only available from kellogg's store which i didn't know they had a store right uh, but but i guess that makes sense more brands are, are doing direct offerings today uh, like like you and I were having a conversation about razors uh, i'm a harry shopper today basically because i clicked replenishment about three years ago and I don't think about it. My blades come, I use them, I throw them away and I get new blades. So, and, and I love that because you don't feel it. Like I hate going into a drugstore and buying blades. I feel like, oh my oh, God. 50 bucks. But, <laughs> but, you know what I do now is I buy my Gillette blades on Amazon and I don't really see it. I don't have to see that big tag with that number. Sure. I just go back to what I bought last time and I say buy it again and it's kind of a similar thing. You know, one last thing I'd like to talk about, just because we got to jump off of here, but because we try to keep these somewhat brief, under 10 minutes, we want to post no LinkedIn, uh, where it has a 10 minute limit. But also, we know you guys don't want to listen for that long. But the last thing I want to bring up is that, you know, how smart it is of Kellogg. To, they're, they're accomplishing another goal. They're bringing attention to the fact that you can buy Kellogg directly. Right. Which is a way for them to bring that channel to them and give them more control over their product, where they probably lost that to a great deal in the stores or are well, losing. I, and, 
and, and even even their own direct channel. But but your your point about your Gillette your razors that is the relevancy that I think I don't think that that Gillette lost market share at a Dollar Shave Club and to Harry's because it, it, they were, were better razors. You know, you and I had you you for you think that Gillette's a better Especially quality product and, and and I would agree it's a great quality product. I think it was easier to shop and that is just as important. When I clicked on buy the cereal at the Kellogg store, guess where it's coming from? I'll give you I'll give you two guesses. It's coming from your local store. It's not. It's coming from Amazon. So oh. they, they integrate like an, an Amazon uh, pay click and I'm out. Got it. Hey man, Our, that's because as we've been saying for so long, simplicity is the new DLP, EDLP. Make it easy for them and they'll buy from you again and again and again. John, I love talking to you. Looking forward to our next one. Same, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Make it a great day, buddy.